Apna course. Get smart. Get ahead. Now let us focus a bit on ISACA, IS audit and assurance standards and guidelines, which I mentioned earlier is the pillar for you in order to successfully understand domain one, a thorough reading of the IS audit and assurance standards and guidelines are very, very, very important. As I said, you need to read it. You need to know it by heart. The most important point here, as I mentioned earlier, is that this standard are not going to be asked by the examiner per se. It only will uh, test your knowledge of application of these standards and guidelines. Let us look at what are these materials as a part of IS audit. The first one is your professional ethics. Each and every individual needs to undertake what is called to adhere to the code of professional ethics. This is not only for IS auditor. It is true of every profession. I do not know how many of you heard about the oath of Hippocrates. The oath of Hippocrates is very, very important as far as one profession is concerned. I hope all of you know what is the Oath of Hippocrates is applicable to the profession of doctors. It is one of the oldest profession and everybody needs to adhere to what is called as the Oath of Hippocrates. Similarly, we IS audit professionals have to adhere to what is called as professional ethics. The next one is the IS audit and assurance standards. Then we have got what is called as guidelines. Then we have got what is called as tools and techniques. If any of you had taken the ISACA CISA examination prior to November 2013, there we had the concept of SPG, Standards, Procedures and Guidelines. Be very clear, this SPG is no longer in existence. For those of you who had given the examination prior to December 2013, you had to know all these things. Now, this has been replaced by the audit assurance standard, guidelines, tools and techniques, which means you need to unlearn what you have learned so far. So on the right hand side, I have given the front page of the book, which is called the IT assurance framework for audit, the ITAF professional practices framework for IS audit and assurance. So this framework, second edition, replaces all other material. So you are requested to download this, which is a free publication. And you can browse through this. If the next few slides, which I'm going to tell you, as well as the entire content in domain one is an outcome of this ITAF. There is nothing in this domain which is outside ITAF. So it is expected that all of you who are appearing for the examination download this and read through in depth and do a deep dive into this. A reading of a deep dive into this will more or less cover the entire domain one CISA material. Except for a few things here and there. So ISACA Code of Professional Ethics. It provides guidance for the professional and personal conduct of members of ISACA and the holders of CISA and CISM designation. It is not necessary that you should, even though it is meant to provide you guidance and you may also be under the impression that I will read this once I pass it after CISA, this may not be true. Because you may get one or two questions out of this professional ethics aspect. So I would urge all of you to read this in depth for your examination purpose. I am not delving deep into this because I want each and every one of you to read through this. Every member needs to read, understand and adhere to the same.
Now I am going to talk about the standards, guidelines and your tools and techniques. There can be at least one question, one question from this particular slide between where it can be phrased or rephrased or questioned in a different manner. There will be one question on standards, guidelines, tools and techniques. The question may look like which of the following provides assistance on how to implement the standards in various audit assignments. A is standards, B it could be guidelines, C it could be tools and techniques, D it could be COVID-5. So the answer would definitely be guidelines. Or the question could be which of the following must be followed IS auditors now when we talk about the legal language please do understand there is a lot of difference between the word shall and the word will in all ISO standards the word shall has given a different connotation and will a different connotation from the colloquial language aspect as well as the legal aspect. All of you as IS auditors needs to know in any of the standards the word shall is mandatory and the word will is optional. You need to understand this basic difference in the connotation of the written language of the word shall and will. Many a times you go to your bosses and others, they will have a debate on shall or will. For most of us, shall is optional and will is mandatory. So we need to unlearn this concept of shall and will from a legal perspective. All the ISO standards, wherever it is mentioned as shall, will be mandatory. So when you are looking at your guidelines, internal procedures and guidelines, many of the people out of ignorance would have written as will. So we need to correct this misconcept about the word shall and will as an IS auditor. So the point here is that this slide, you can expect a definite question out of this, whether it is phrased or rephrased or whatever it is, you need to understand because this is a high importance item. The next thing, okay, this is again the question related to that. What is a, the objective of a standard? So the objective of a standard is one to inform management of the profession's expectation management. So standard objective is to very clearly expectations concerning the work of audit practitioners. Inform systems auditor the minimum acceptable performance required to meet as set out in the ISACA code of professional ethics. Now to understand this is I have put it in a very color combination one to have you a very good recall. Standards are classified into three general standards, performance standards, reporting standard and there is something on assurance which we will see. I put standards and guidelines in a single slide for you people to understand 1100 series is a general standard corresponding to that you have got what is called as a 2100 series which is called guideline. So the first number indicates whether it is a standard or is it a guideline. So you need to understand so one anything starting with one is a standard anything starting with two is a guideline okay so this is actually an odd man reporting services guidelines reporting guidelines is there reporting standard is there now as far as this is concerned so one more important aspect from the examination point of view no memory test of what is 1100 or what is 2100 the only thing they are going to ask is the application of these standards in various business scenarios. So general standards, within general standards we have got, so where you have got 1001 is audit chapter, 
then you have got 1002 as organizational independence, 1003 as professional independence, 1004 as reasonable expectation, 1005 is due professional care, 1006 is proficiency, 1007 is assertions, 1008 is criteria. Then we go to 2100 series. What is 2100 series? Is 2100 is the audit chapter. 2002 as the gray color indicates it is only a guideline. 2002 is organizational independence. 2003 is professional independence. 2004 is reasonable expectation. 2005 is professional care. 2006 is proficiency. 2007 is assertion and 2008 is criteria. So we need to, need to understand this very clearly as far as the chart is concerned. You would have seen something in red means which is in development, which is not ready. Also you would see something and write in bracket as G5, G12, G17, G7 and G13. All this pertain to the old guidelines numbers which has been renumbered as per the new guidelines. For, to bring in tandem with the series, it is only renumbered. G5 has become 2001, G12 has become 2002, G17 has become 2003, G7 has become 2005, G30 has become 2006. So none of the standards have changed. This is for those people who have already got used to SPG domain. Prior to 2013, they would like to correlate it to the learning exercise. So for that purpose, they have given you this numbering. Otherwise, these standards have not undergone any major change. Now let us look at the performance standard, which is the 1200 series which is engagement planning, which is risk assessment in planning, then performance and supervision, then there is materiality, then there is evidence, then there is using the worth of other experts, then you have got 1207, which is talking about irregularity and illegal acts. We will be discussing this as a part of the topic which is called performing an IS audit. We will not discuss it at length here. You need to know Whenever you are reading performing an IS audit topic, you need to go back to this performance standard for you to understand and interpolate and understand. Then we have the 2200 series, which talks about engagement planning, G15, 2202, which is risk assessment in audit planning, 2203 is performance and supervision, 2204 is materiality, 2205 is using the work of other experts, 2206 is audit evidence, 2207 is irregularity and illegal acts and 2208 audit sampling. One of the most important aspects to remember is between standards and guidelines is this does not have a corresponding standard. If you look at the earlier slide, there is a one-to-one -one mapping of standard versus guideline. So 2201, for example, is engagement planning guideline. 1201 will be the corresponding. If you look at back, 1201 is engagement planning. 1202 is risk assessment in planning. 1203 is performance and supervision. So there is one to one relationship between the standard and the guideline, which is not true of only 2208 because there is no corresponding standard for 2208. Coming back to reporting standards, again you have got 1400 series of reporting and follow up which will be a standard, then you have got reporting guidelines. So this is a standard, this is a guideline, as the number suggests. So under reporting standard, there are only two standards, one is reporting, one is follow-up, and then under guidelines, you have got one-to-one -one correspondence, which is the 
2401 and 2402 there is absolutely there is one to one correspondence of this and this so whenever you read i would urge you to read a following standard and then the corresponding guideline please do not read standards and guidelines in isolation because standards and guidelines go hand in hand now for those of you who would have read through the earlier guidelines you may be seeing that all guidelines or standards would not have come here which means they have been subsequently withdrawn after this new standards which have come this is a bit of academic information for the old timers the next is the assurance guideline which comes under the 3000 series under that you have got 3200 which talks about enterprise topic 3400 talks about is management processes 3600 talks about is audit and assurance processes it talks about 3800 is is audit and assurance management so we will not delve deep into this you can further read it from your standard which is given to you apna course get smart get ahead